Hey fellas, how you doing? It's Johnny. I want to speak about something that's going to really help you out. And it's, um, I was speaking to my friend Sati the other day and uh, he likes what I'm doing. He's a Christian, by the way. Uh, he's a he's an Indian guy, but he's a Christian. And he likes my work, but he always kind of talks about different areas and what he feels about certain things I'm doing, certain things are good or whatever. And uh, sometimes he says stuff that I completely don't agree with and he just, I think he's talking bonkers, but he always says things that are really relevant to my work, my business, or something that I'm going through or something I'm learning. You say like one word or two words and I'll go away and I'll think, fucking hell, that made sense and I'll translate it in a language that I can understand and you guys. So in today's video, I want to talk about fellowship. Uh, fellowship was um, spoken about in the Bible, but I'm going to use fellowship as a word for a wingman. So when you pick up community in the dating world, Lots of guys will always ask me, they'll say, Johnny, uh, I want to go out, but I haven't got a wingman. I've got a lot of social anxiety, and I, and I understand, because I used to be in this place. And I think one of the biggest sticking points is, when, when guys say to me, I can't find a good wingman, what you're really saying is, and we're going to cut the bullshit for this video, you're really saying is, I'm frightened to make friends. I'm frightened to have fellowship in my life. Because if you struggle with women, you struggle with making friends, period. Period. I know, because I used to be this way, and I work with a lot of men. Now remember, everything I say within reason, don't take it out of context. So I just quickly went up on Google because I just wanted to understand what fellowship meant. Well, I knew what it meant, but I wanted to get the biblical understanding just so I could stress it. And don't panic, I'm not trying to um, shove the Bible down your face or preach God to you or anything like that. I'm just stressing the point because I think there's some good ethics within this and I want to stress it and apply it to how it can help you in your life and how it's helped me. And of course, because I'm speaking to mainly men here, I have to be the one to take the stand. I have to be the leader in this case because you guys won't open up if I don't. Lots of the reasons why you struggle is because you have social problems. Don't be, again, when we say the word problem in our society, we panic, we think someone's insulting us or trying to put us down. I'm very proud that I had social problems. I had social anxiety. I had lots of psychological problems. I didn't trust people. I was paranoid, I was insecure. I'm really pleased I had those things because they inspired me and enabled me to work on those things and build courage, confidence, self-esteem, self-love and connect with other people and develop fellowship. So fellowship, it says here, I'm going to quickly read this. It says, uh, I'm just going to read this, so bear with me if I'm looking at the camera because it's very important and powerful, trust me, right? Stay on this video. Sometimes familiar words lose their intended meaning, such as the word fellowship. We use it a lot, but most times it's not in the biblical meaning. In our day-to-day -day -day world, it's used to describe gatherings, ranging from coffee, donuts, and to worship services. Most times it's associated with the gathering where there is eating, which is fine. It's explaining the sort of context of how we explain fellowship in social language. But the true biblical term is, and I want to use biblical as a metaphor, don't worry if you're not a Christian, you don't need to be. This is just ethics for to bring you guys together more, to connect us men together more, build relationships so we can become more attractive, get the support as a wingman, and meet more attractive women. So stay with me on what I'm talking about. So it says here, what I, want to, what I want to do today is look at the Bible and use the word as it's used in the scripture, and let it teach us what is the true meaning of fellowship that God would have us to experience. So it says here, um, the word, let me second gathering, so get to the word. Yeah. We learn in God's word that fellowship is in the heart, is a heart issue. So basically what it's saying is how I understand it, the fellowship is about connecting on a very deep level, no bullshit. So when you've got your best friend or you say, I love my mate, he's my best mate, because you connect with him on a very pure level, heart to heart, uh, self-love, cutting out all the bullshit, right? So it says, um, it's yeah, God's worship is, in, is a heart issue. Something that is felt and expressed, and sometimes very important to be a part of. It should occur apart from any program, schedule, activity. It's stressing the importance, the bigger picture. Hence why you guys are doing day games. It's not about getting laid and shagging women. It's about that on a surface level. It's about connecting to your self-love, connecting straight into your heart. That's what you want to connect to. When you get that, you get women anyway. Uh, it's saying it's a heart issue. Something that's felt and expressed. Something that is very important, a part of. Yeah, it should occur from the program, schedules. Uh, geez, okay. I'm going to skip some of that, it's a bit too religious, so to share this together and help support. Yeah, this is the bit I really love and I want to share with you guys. This is what I do as a teacher, and this is what any mentor would do for a student, if he cares, and I do care. So, yeah, hold on, bear with me. I've just found a really good bit I want to share with you. Yeah, 
So the main essence of meaning of fellowship in a biblical scripture, or that you know, it's in its true form, is to share things together and help and support each other, both physically and spiritually. That's really beautiful. That's really nice. And it says, if one of the members were hurt, and we share that burden. Fucking hell, that is really nice. That is, wow, that's really powerful. That's a lovely meaning. What it's basically saying is, it's saying that the material stuff, right? The material stuff like making like money, all the kind of stuff, it was saying that it is, yeah. all right, let me get my, it's saying, going out and having coffee and meetings, that's okay, that's fellowship. Like making money, going on dates, doing the selfish things, we need some of that. I suppose that's healthy for our ego and we, we need some of that, right? I'm not trying to get to become a saint. But it's saying the deeper meaning, what we really yearn for, what we need, and I know for myself, I definitely need this, I get a lot of this through teaching and just, you know, connecting with women more on a better level. It's saying that the deep level is connecting from the heart. Now, when I say to you guys, you have to be yourself going out doing day game, it's because it's very important. Now, you might not understand this or might not know it, but you feel it. And that's why if you're around good people and you can be yourself, you feel that fellowship, that brotherhood, you feel that trust. When you're out of alignment, you may not feel that. You feel disconnected, you feel nervous, you feel anxious, you feel you can't trust people. So it's important that you develop fellowship. So when you're saying to me, I can't find any wingman, don't bullshit me. Don't, you know, don't, come on. You're speaking to someone that bullshitted himself for many years of his life and made the changes, right? Had the courage to look at himself in the mirror and fix these problems and change my life around. I, I literally changed my life. I can't tell you what I did. So my social circle group's got over 500 members, all waiting for fellowship. Now I can't always be in the group because I, I work full time, I work every hour of every day because I love what I'm doing. But I set that group up for you guys to immerse yourself in it, make friends go out and develop fellowship. When you connect with men on a non-gay level, don't worry, and you've got good friends and you're around them. And it, like it said in the Bible, when you've got support with each other, you help and support each other on a soul or a heart level or a spiritual level, you're going to get better results with women. You're going to get girlfriends. You're going to feel better about yourself. You're, you're going to build your self-esteem. So it was really good what Sati said to me when he said, your guys need more fellowship. And that's why I did that video on day game um, on YouTube. I think I titled it How to Connect to Self-Love. When you see me going out speaking to men, there was a metaphor for fellowship. Now, I do this because I've slept with lots of attractive women. And I said before, there was no love there. There was no self-love. I don't regret doing it because everything I've done has got me to where I am now. But the realization was it is about connecting man to man, man to God, or man to himself, or, you know, being your authentic self. It all means the same thing. It's connecting to the self-love. And if you don't have any fellowship, if you've got no friends around, you, don't f you feel empty. And I know because I felt that. And I can honestly say about the risk of sounding brash or big-headed or arrogant. When I was younger, people did like me. Everywhere I went, people wanted to be friends with me. The problem was, I was too afraid. I wanted to be friends, but I didn't trust people because of all of my bullying and what I went through. My father was strict on me. He was hot and cold. Sometimes he's really nice to me, then he could just turn. So I was always waiting for people to turn on me. So when people were trying to get close to me, I would push them away. And I think unconsciously, I probably made friends with people that were kind of on my level, so I knew I was safe. But that I lost out because I wanted to make friends with more confident people. I wanted to make friends with people from different backgrounds. I wanted to make friends with people that had done more things than me. I wanted. To, I, now I connect with everyone. I've got friends from all different backgrounds, and I've got so much more fellowship in my life. I feel more happy. I feel more attractive, and I am more attractive for that. And that's what I want to share with you guys. And women are attracted to men who have fellowship. They don't really want to go out of a man who's got one friend. And everything I say to you, every criticism I give you, it's back to me. Because I used to be like this. So I understand the level of the problem. So I can't stress to you that a wingman is important. Of course you want to get a good wingman. But if you keep telling me that everyone's negative, that's because that's fucking resonating straight out from you. Because you're negative. You need to work on yourself. It can't all be negative. I've got over 500 people in the social circle. And I speak to most of the guys. And some of them I've mentored. And I know them. And they're not negative people. And we all fall out sometimes, we all get negative. And like it said in the Bible, it said that fellowship's about supporting each other spiritually, mentally, and, you know, and it says, when one person's down, everyone's hurt. I know that sounds cheesy, but that's really powerful. And that's how I had good friendships with my friend Floyd, my friend Alex, some other friends growing up. Because when one friend was upset, I was fucking upset. Because that's the type of person I am, that's the type of ethics I, I uphold. If, you're, if we're friends, I'm friends with you for the good times and the bad times. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not going to carry you, I'm not going to wipe your ass, but I'll fucking probably do everything I can to help you out. I'm a very loyal person, and funny enough, the same person who hurt my feelings taught me this. My father taught me very good ethics, he just delivered them in a very fucking strict way. But they've stuck now, and it's, it's made me more attractive, and it just builds your core, it makes you better with women. 
So we need fellowship as men. We need to cut the competition out. And I think that's one of the sayings that um, Gandhi said he did. The only way to get rid of your enemies is to make them friends. It's such a beautiful saying. It's so nice because that's what I've done with all the bullies. I've just, they don't exist for me because I've, I've forgiven them. I don't have to go out every night hanging out of them, but I can love them from afar. So it is important that you have fellowship and women will be more attracted to you. You guys ask me all the time, how do I build a chat woman? Fuck the day game blueprint. That's, that doesn't work. And forget the pickup stuff. This is powerful stuff. This stuff is in Bibles, scriptures. This is experience from man down all the generations and, and we're getting it. And I'm learning this from my mentor and I'm learning it from myself because I'm always going out and researching if this stuff works. And I, like I said, I've laid off women for a while. I'm around men because I wanted to work on old insecurities, old stuff that rised up years later and now I'm kind of just dissolving it. And I love being around guys, being around men. I love women as well, but I, I've enjoyed my time. And the last couple of months since I had that sort of psychological transformation or a bit of a breakdown, I spent a lot of time. I went traveling with Junior to Prague. I really enjoyed that, a proper fellowship with Junior. And uh, great fellowship with Sati, a great fellowship with um, Sanji, my friend I've been working with. Uh, I'm his mentor, he's mine. We're both teaching each other. He's a martial artist, so he's helping me out with some other stuff, like really like sort of spiritual stuff. and. He actually helped me a lot of my body language, helped me a lot of kind of different areas. And of course, fellowship with my mentor, with Jeff. So we need fellowship as men. We, we make out like we don't need it. It's very important. Don't matter how strong you are or how manly you think you are, you'll, you'll be lost about fellowship. Even if you've got, like, listen, I'll tell you the truth. Three, four years ago, when I was at the height of everyone shouting off Johnny Burr, Johnny Burr, I was getting laid with loads of attractive women, I was dating lots of women, but I had no fellowship. I had no male friends. Only when I was teaching, and that's just for a couple of hours, and it's kind of different because when I'm teaching, I love to do that, but that's my job. Outside of my job, I had no fellowship because unconsciously I was pushing it away because of old wounds. Now I've got loads of fellowship and it almost feels like I don't need to do as much digging or approaching because women can just feel that alignment. They just feel it. That energy is different. There's been a shift and there's probably an unwritten sign saying I'm more open, I'm more sociable, which I am. So we need fellowship and we can start now. I'm going to leave a link, join my social circle group. Write something in the group, hi, you know, just introduce yourself. You're not going to be ridiculed. I'm going to support you. There's loads of guys in there and we've got to make the first move. If we want fellowship and we want to connect with people. We can't say people are nasty to me or I don't trust anyone. I know it's not easy, but we've got to take the first leap of faith. If you take the first le leap of faith, and I'm using this as a metaphor, God will do the rest. He'll help you out, but it won't help you out if you just sit on your ass and do nothing. And I'll help you out. And I'm doing it now with the videos. And uh, you're building fellowship with me, but sometimes it's at a distance. So, you know, give me an email or come down to my seminars. I'm going to be arranging them soon. Uh, if you want to do one of my live events, I've got boot camps. I've got programs. Go to my website and see the coaching I offer. I offer lots of free stuff. I've got paid stuff. So whatever is right for you at the particular time, whatever's in your budget or, you know, whatever you're prepared to, to do. But you need fellowship. So important for the heart. So important for building your identity, so important for connecting women, so important for um, getting rid of that lonely feeling, so important for getting out of the house, so important for doing the job you want. So we need fellowship, we need a wingman. Wingman is just another word for fellowship. It's the tacky PUA language. And I'm gonna, I'm working towards changing it. And there's other people that are doing the same. So it's, uh, it is really important, it's really helped me. I've got so much from it. I'll probably do another video speaking about the benefits, but I've pretty much said them now anyway. So basically the video is about, if you're not into, if you don't want to speak about God and all that stuff, that's fine. I'm just basically saying get a wingman. <laughs> just get a wingman, it will help you to attract more women in your day game and improve, all right? So like and subscribe, enjoy the process. I'm gonna leave a link somewhere, probably on the video in the description and click the link, join my social circle Facebook group, it's free. There's over 500 members. I'm soon gonna be running face-to-face, um, -face, what do you call it? meetup groups every month in London. I'm just looking for a venue, it's gonna be sorted out. I'm going to a trip for Poland. When I get back, these things are gonna be running, you'll be the first to know. But whilst, in the meantime, go in the group, write your questions up, collaborate with people. Even if you're just frightened to meet in person, have a chat online and then build your courage. Make the first step and build a connection, get some support, it will change your life, all right? I'll see you next video. Thanks a lot, Sati, that was, that was good that you said that. Enjoy the process.